You know, I was on a conference call this week with about eight or nine people, all but one were women, and we were talking about the launch coming up of a book uh, that I've written that's coming out in September called Let Go of the Guilt. And it was so interesting to me because one of the moms, well, one of the women on the call who's a mom, and most of the women on the call were moms, not all, but some, um, started talking about how in the midst of this crisis, she has started to feel guilty because her young kids, like kindergarten age, want her to stop working in the middle of the day and play or do whatever it is that they want her to do, but she's working, but of course working from home, which is so different from what life looked like just a few short months ago. And then there were other women on the call who chimed in because they aren't moms and they are alone and that's hard, but then they feel guilty about even talking about the fact that they're having a hard time because at least they're not trying to homeschool their kids while they're working. You know, I think we can be really hard on ourselves. We can beat ourselves up. And in the midst of all that has changed in the last couple of months, the last thing we need is to be super critical of ourselves. What we need is self-compassion. And I'm wondering, what are the ways that you've been beating yourself up? And how could you be a little more gentle with yourself? Just even noticing how hard all of these different transitions have been and all the balls we have in the air and all the uncertainty that we can feel. Just acknowledging how that feels and the anxiety that it can produce and the questions that it can produce and sometimes the guilt that comes up like these ladies were talking about. You know, the research shows that just acknowledging something is hard is like a relief. <laughs> it lowers your stress level. It's an act of self-compassion. And all that means is that as you're having a hard time and you find yourself beating yourself up, that you make a conscious decision to talk to yourself the way you would talk to your best friend if they were dealing with the same challenge. You probably wouldn't just beat them up. <laughs> you probably wouldn't be super critical of them. Instead, you'd help them see what they're doing right. So I don't know where this message hits for you. If you're a mom, I just wanna tell you, you're doing an amazing job. <laughs> and sometimes, like I found recently with my son, sometimes we just have to talk to our kids, like tell them the truth. When I'm not working, I talk to Alex about the fact that, hey, mommy works and yeah, that's my office now down in the basement. And when I'm working, it's kind of like when you're at school, there's certain things I can and can't do. And when I'm done, we'll have time together. And you know what that has sparked? It has sparked conversation with him where he's asking me to explain, well, how do you make money by working? And, oh, okay, so this is how we pay for things. And I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> At six, it's opened up a conversation that helps him better understand how the world works, how our family works. And it's helped him to even be more supportive when I say, hey, I'm on a call, I need you to be quiet right now. But having self-compassion and just owning the fact that, you know what, this is the work you've chosen. This is the family you've chosen to have. And both can go hand in hand. Helping your kids understand that is powerful. <laughs> but being compassionate with yourself is even more powerful. So that's it, stop beating yourself up and give yourself credit for the hard work you're doing and the great job you're doing. Have a little self-compassion.